Hello friends, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome. I am Vicki and you're with Grammy in the Kitchen. But today is the day before Thanksgiving. We're not having a big gathering tomorrow. It's just going to be the husband and myself. But we do enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. And we love the leftovers to get us through till Sunday. So if this is something you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button. If you find anything in this video of any value to you, please hit that like button. But let me tell you what we're going to do today. We're going to spatchcock a chicken with herb butter. Because it's just the two of us, there was no need cooking a turkey. I did buy a turkey today, but we're not cooking it. I'm actually going to save that for a canning project. We're going to cook and prepare our sweet potatoes for a sweet potato casserole. We're going to peel and chop our potatoes for mashed potatoes that we're going to cook tomorrow. We're going to make homemade bread and then cube it, dry it out for stuffing. Then we're going to chop some vegetables and cook that in some chicken stock for our stuffing also. We're going to make a homemade chocolate cream pie with a homemade graham cracker crust. Then we're going to make a pumpkin pie with a homemade pie crust that I had in the freezer. And then we're going to make two butter compounds. One's going to be a honey butter and the other one's going to be a garlic honey butter. We went grocery shopping and I'm going to show you the grocery haul also. So without further ado, Aprons on, let's get this day going. So this is going to be a very small grocery haul. Um, I went to Food Lion because they had a sale on turkey, but I wanted to pick up the turkey since it was so cheap. That's a very cheap protein. It was 39 cents a pound if you spent $35 or more. I did need to pick up a few things for dinner tomorrow. I knew I was going to spend $35 at Food Lion, so I went ahead and got a turkey. So let me show you what we got today. I picked up a pack of white American cheese. Um, the husband loves this as grilled cheese. So I picked that up. I picked up a half a gallon of milk so I can make his chocolate pie. They did not have a very good selection of eggs. So, I prefer organic eggs, but they did not have any that were not crazy priced. I think it was $7.99 a dozen. But I got this Nature's Promise for $4.49, and I got the Eggland Best for $4.99. So, you have to do what you got to do in these times. I needed some bacon soda, so I picked up a thing of bacon soda that was 89 cents. Uh, making the chocolate pie, so I had to get some graham crackers. That was 209. And because I've been doing a lot of bacon here lately, I had to get some oven cleaner. Not the best, but it needs to be done. So we're going to use this, and this was 519. This is the husband's favorite bread. He doesn't use this just for hot dogs. He used it to make like subs also. Um, Cause I can some pork barbecue and he uses this as a sub bread for his pork barbecue. So this bread was $4.29. They had marshmallows. They did not have the store brand. I am not opposed to buying store brand, but they didn't have any. So I had to get this and I went ahead and got two because I probably won't use a whole one for Thanksgiving, but I want to make sure I had extras for Christmas so I don't have to worry about that. So this was two for three eighteen. The turkey I picked up thirteen point seven two pounds. Regular price was two twenty nine a pound because I spent thirty five dollars or more. I was able to get it for thirty nine cents a pound. So, 
the savings on this was twenty six oh seven. So I paid five dollars and thirty five cents for this turkey, which I am very very happy because this is a cheap protein. I have a pack of sweet potatoes. I ended up picking four and a half pounds, and they were ninety nine cents a pound, so that was four fifty two. And then I picked up some white potatoes, and this is a five pound bag, and it was $4.99. But we have the MVP card with Food Lion able to save. So on the sweet potatoes, I was able to save $3.19. On the bread, I was able to save 30 cents. And on the marshmallows, I believe this is combined, I was able to save 18 cents. In addition to the turkey, I saved $26. So my savings today was $29.74. Total spent with the turkey, with the tax, was $45.14. It's not bad considering I got a $31 turkey right here. So that's okay. So that's the grocery haul. I will put this away and it is the day before Thanksgiving in my world. In your world, it's probably either Thanksgiving day or two days after. I'm not sure when this video is gonna go out, but I need to get this in the refrigerator so I can start thawing so we can get it canned. So I put one cup of warm water and a quarter cup of sugar and three quarters of a teaspoon of yeast and I let it bloom. Now that it's bloomed, we're going to go ahead and add our oil. I have an eighth of a cup of olive oil. We're going to add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to add about three to four cups of flour. It's a little sticky. I'm going to add another cup of flour. We'll just add a touch of water. It's a little chilly in the house today, so I think it needs a little more hydration. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move over to the island. And we're going to knead this by hand. We're going to put a little flour on our bench. Make sure we have all the bits and pieces in here. I'm just going to knead this by hand. It's very cold today and it's a little chilly in the house. So it might take a little bit longer for this to come together. Get the bread baked and cubed and dried for the stuffing tomorrow. Yeah, it's coming together now. So starting right now we're going to need it for eight minutes okay, it did it for eight minutes I'm forming it into a ball Putting a little bit of olive oil in the same bowl we mixed it in. Make 
mustard. Well coat it in the oil. I'm going to cover it with saran wrap. And my oven actually has a bread proof um, setting, so I'm going to put this in my oven, do the bread proof, and I'll bring you back when it's doubled in size. And now we're going to start working on the chicken, but I'm going to do something different. It is called spatch cock chicken. It's where you remove the backbone on both sides. We will not waste that. We'll stick that in the scrap bag for our no cost no waste chicken stock for the future and the breast and you push down and you kind of like lay it flat just look it up it's very interesting so but in the meantime we're going to work on our herb mixture so i have some room temperature butter here i am going to add some garlic cloves. I was going to add these two, but this is actually pretty big. All right, we're going to mince this. I want it very, very fine. If you have a garlic press, use that. Put it in a pile. We're going to leave the tip of my knife on the table and we're just going to run the back of the knife up and down, side to side. Again, put it in a pile and repeat. That's probably about two tablespoons of garlic. Let's add that to our butter mixture. We're going to add about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. We're going to add about a teaspoon of onion powder. We're going to add about a teaspoon of salt, about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Let's give this a mix. We're losing good stuff here. We can't do that. Just using the back of a fork, mixing that up together. Chicken weighs about four pounds and 12 ounces, so four and three quarter pounds. Just go ahead and get this opened up. All right, so I have it breast side down. And the backbone is right here so I'm just going to cut on either side of this tail piece sharp scissors work really great on this task these are kitchen shears And then the same thing on this side. Just take your time. Clean the inside out. Careful those 
bones are sharp. Now we're going to turn this breast side up, turn the legs inward, and what we're going to do is we're going to break this chest bone. Trying to get it as flat as possible. All right, we're going to go in the upper chest area. We're going to open up the skin from the meat. <clears throat> and we want to do the same thing with the leg. That wing doesn't want to stay. We'll fix it before we're ready to cook this tomorrow. And the same thing over here on this leg and thigh. Just put your thumb, your finger in there and just open it up as far as you can go. We're going to take some of our butter mixture our herbed delicious butter. We're just going to put it underneath the skin. On the thigh part. Because this butter has been contaminated with raw chicken, we cannot save this for anything. So it's either use it or lose it. We want to use it. So we're just going to massage that skin on the top to get that butter as far as down as we could possibly get it to go. my hands. I got a paper towel. I'm going to absorb as much moisture as I can off of the top of this bird. And we're going to take the wings. We're going to tuck it out under. We're going to tuck it under the top part of the breast meat. Just so we don't have no burnt ends. I have my scrap bag. Put my garlic peels in there, along with chicken. That is a spatchcock chicken. I got the wings tucked under, the wing tips tucked under the top. The legs are folded in and we press it down. Now we wiped it dry. We have our herb butter underneath. Now we're going to wrap it up very well. And we're going to stick this in the refrigerator till tomorrow. Yeah. That is ready to go. I am going to be cooking this in the Dutch oven on stovetop first thing in the morning. And then once we get a nice crispy skin, then we'll put it in the oven in the same Dutch oven. So I'm going to go ahead and get the kitchen all tidied up and I'll bring you back when we move on to the next step. So now we're going to work on the chocolate pie. This recipe actually comes from American's Test Kitchen, but they put theirs in a pre-baked pie crust. I'm actually going to make a graham cracker crust. So in this bag, uh, Ziploc bag, I have 
three and a half packages of this graham crackers and it's just a store brand and I have some butter that is almost melted but first we need to pulverize these graham crackers I'm just going to go and break them with my hand just a little bit and then I have a rolling pin and I'm going to really whack it you got a food processor you can also do it in a food press processor but that's just an extra item for me to clean just turning the bag back and forth to make sure I'm getting both sides and then once I get the little pieces I just roll the rolling pin across it and remove some of the air from the bag and just continue put everything in this bag I'm not sure if that was enough graham cracker crumbs we are using a nine and a half inch pie pan I'm gonna put a tablespoon of sugar in here this is a half tablespoon so I'm putting two of those in there this is a quarter cup of melted butter just making sure all the solids are broken up let's stir that together put this in our pie pan and we're just going to use the back end of our measuring cup starting in the center smushing it down and we're going to use our hand to guide and just give it a good press up against the edge in the refrigerator so this recipe sorry my glasses are dark this recipe is actually from American's Test Kitchen and it's called how to make a chocolate cream pie like I said I'm using a graham cracker crust but I'm using their recipe for the filling a third cup of sugar quarter cup of cornstarch a quarter teaspoon of salt two tablespoons of cocoa powder and what we want to do is we want to whisk this together before we put heat on it we want to make sure we distribute the cocoa powder and the cornstarch with the sugar and the salt no lump so I'm just whisking it all together. We have three cups of whole milk. Whisk this together. And now we're going to turn the heat on. We're going to put it on medium. We want to constantly whisk this so we don't have it burn or scorching to the bottom. And as the milk heats up, it will activate that cornstarch to start thicken up, which is what we want. But we need it to come to a rolling boil. And so you see it's boiling. Now we're going to count 30 seconds. and I weighed this six ounces these are chocolate chips but you can use 
on the blocks and cut them up. But this is chocolate chips. It's a bittersweet chocolate chip. So six ounces of chocolate chips. And then we have three tablespoons of butter. We're going to whisk that together until the chocolate and the butter melt. Make sure you get into the corners of the pan also. Right, there we go. The color is changing. The chocolate is melting. Look at the beautiful. Isn't it gorgeous? And the final thing we're going to add is two teaspoons of vanilla. I am eyeballing that. Whisk that in. Let's taste this. into our chilled graham cracker crust. Put a little bit of oil on the side, one side of this parchment paper and I am just going to lay it on top. I am using avocado oil. Use whatever oil you have on hand. This will help it keep from building a film, that rubber type film on the top. Now we're going to leave this on the counter for one hour. Then we're going to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator for two hours. But we're going to leave. So I'm using the one pound bread pan. I have some coconut oil. Just gonna liberally oil this so we can go ahead and get our bread in here. So it can do its second rise. Make sure we get all the corners and the creases. saran wrap. I'm going to use my handy little tool that I got from Azure Standard. We're just going to roll it out. We're just going to make a basic white bread so we can cube up and Make our stuffing. All right now, we're going to fold it in thirds. And we're going to fold it in thirds the other way. Now, we're going to roll this out again. I'm turning it a quarter turn and pushing up from the center. As you can see, it's almost the size of my pan. Alright, so now we're going to start rolling it. So, taking it and I'm rolling it into like a jelly roll. Pushing it very tight, then pulling these up and pinching it. And then I want to push these in. Just 
seam side down and the lip pin. And now we're going to let it do its second rise. But what I do is I just wrap it up in saran wrap and then I put it in a Ziploc bag and just keep it in the freezer. That way I have pie crust on the ready. Put some flour on our bench. flour or our rolling pin and we're just going to slowly get this rolled out. So I'm just working my way around the edge, pushing from the center going out, rotating it, instead of moving the angle of my rolling pin, I'm moving the dough. I have a nine and a half inch Pyrex pie plate that we're going to be using. Let me come into a nice little circle. So now I'm going to be moving the rolling pin versus the dip. If it starts to break and get jaggedy, it's okay. We can fix that. So I have a little bit of water. I'm just going to dip my finger in it, rub the dough, and then I'm going to overlap it. That will cause it to seal and it will be no more breaks. Put a little bit of flour on it so my rolling pin doesn't stick to that. And I have some room temperature butter and a paper towel. I'm going to butter the bottom of this pan. That is going to add flavor as well as keep the dough from sticking. Now we're going to pick up our pie crust and put it over here centered. So I'm just using my rolling pin as a tool to pick the crust up. Without stretching the dough, I am just picking up the edge so that the dough can go into the corners of the pie plate. Notice we have a little bit right here that needs some mending. No problem, we can take care of that. A little bit of water on the fingertips, overlap it, and push it down. So we're going to trim this about a half an inch from the edge of the lip. And we're going to take it, we're going to fold it under all the way around, just about a half of an inch. That gives us some structure on the crust. And then we're going to take our thumb and finger and on one hand, and we're going to take our finger pointer on the other hand and we're just going to push it together to create a beautiful scalloped edge. And we now have pie crust.
crust. We'll put this in the refrigerator while we work on our pie filling. So this is pumpkin pie filling that I bought a couple pumpkins and I cooked them. I did not bring you along with me. It was before I invited y'all into my kitchen. But we're going to use home pumpkin. Home cooked pumpkin. You can use canned pumpkin. You can use fresh pumpkin if you just cooked it. Or in my case, frozen pumpkin. Alright, let me get this all out of this bag and I'll bring in a mixing bowl, we have our pumpkin. We're going to add two eggs and we're going to beat that together first. So, in here, I have one and a half teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of salt. One 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. And now we're going to mix that together. That's it. We're going to pour it into the pie plate now. <clears throat> so we have the oven preheating for 425. And we're going to bake it at 425 for 15 minutes. Then we're going to reduce it to 350 for 35 to 40 minutes. So the oven is preheated to 425. So I put the, pulled the pie crust from the refrigerator. We had it in the refrigerator while we were making the filling. Now this is a home cooked pumpkin, so it's not orange like the can, but it should turn out just fine. Scrape, make sure we get all the bits and pieces out of there. So I have a pizza pan right here. I will put our pie in the center in case it boils over and also regulate the heat from the bottom of this Pyrex dish. So in the oven for 15 minutes, we're going to reduce the temperature to 350 for 35, 40 minutes. So since we're at a standstill, we're going to go ahead and get our vegetables chopped for the stuffing for tomorrow. I do like to do this the day before, cook it in the chicken stock, and then I'll just stick it in the refrigerator. That way tomorrow the vegetables are cooked and we could go ahead and make the stuffing. Stuffing is a uh, personal preference. You can make it any way you like. I took out the scrap bag from my freezer. This is the other half onion that we used last week. I will be using the remainder of this. Again, we're going to save the scraps. And I have two carrots, three ribs of celery, and I am going to put apples in my stuffing. So I've got two apples. So I'm going to dice this onion very, very fine. The husband likes the flavor of onions, but he doesn't want to bite into a chunk of onion. more onions than I really need. I'm going to do about half a cup. And the rest of it I'll just stick in this Ziploc bag and I'll stick it in the freezer. That way we have already chopped onions for another recipe for another day. Peeling the carrots. And I want these also very small cubes.
and leave the peelings on or you can remove if you use apples I prefer to have my peelings off you can add sausage to your stuffing you can do whatever you want this is the traditional stuffing that my dad would cook growing up every Thanksgiving and over the years I have tweaked the recipe to where I cook my vegetables where he did not and I add apples and he also used regular bread he toast his bread after he cubed it and he didn't buy the package of bread cubes for a long time I was using the package of bread cubes that were already toasted then I decided to have control over the ingredients that my family eats I decided that I was going to make my own bread cubes and um, toast them I was going to make my own bread cube it myself and toast it again these are going to be small dices so I cut them in half and then I cut them in quarters and then I just put the knife at a 45 degree angle to remove the core the only thing you don't want to save for your stock scrap bag is anything starchy such as potato peels Onions, celery, carrots, and apples. Strap bag. Back in the freezer. My no waste, no cost chicken stock is still frozen. You can use store bought. You can use home can, home frozen, whatever you have on hand, whatever you like. So I'm just going to put this on the stove and let that melt and then I'll add my vegetables. While this is taking its time to melt the chicken broth, let's check on our bread. We have it proofing in the oven on the second rise. Oh yeah, it's rising beautiful. Doesn't matter if it's ugly. Because we're going to bake this, slice it very thick, and make cubes. Because this is actually the bread for our stuffing to go along with these vegetables. So the broth has melted. Let's go ahead and add our chopped vegetables and our apples. And we're going to let that cook in this broth until the carrots, the celery, and the onions are tender and the apples are not mushy but soft. If they get mushy, that's fine. The flavor will still be there even though the apple chunks will not. All right, so we're just gonna leave this alone and let it cook for about two hours on medium low. I am gonna put a lid on it and just let that be. The pumpkin pie is done. It did take longer. I had to bake mine when I reduced it to 335. I had to bake it for one hour to get that center not be so liquidy. Now we're going to go ahead and bake our bread. Setting the oven for 350 degrees. I'm removing the plastic wrap. And that is our bread. Once the oven gets up to temperature, we'll go ahead and put bread in the oven and we're going to bake this. I just put the bread in the oven. I don't want the stock to evaporate, but I do want it to simmer and soften those vegetables. So I'm going to keep an eye on it make sure that the liquid's not evaporating too fast, but it's going to be on low and slow. But while we got some downtime, we're going to go ahead and peel 
and chop our potatoes. Got a little bit of this yellow Yukon potatoes left. We're going to use those. And I have a couple regular white potatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and get these peeled and chopped up. And these in the refrigerator to tomorrow. So I got the potatoes and water. I have it covered with saran wrap and our bread is ready. It took 15 minutes for it to cook. I'm going to invert this over here on this plate and then we're going to let it cool off completely before we slice it and cube it. Now we're going to go ahead and start cubing this bread get it ready for the stuffing. So I want a nice thick cut, so I'm doing it about an inch slices. If it falls apart, it is okay, because we're just going to toast these up in the oven to dry them out. about an inch cubes. Alright, so we have our bread cubes ready to go in the oven. First we're going to drizzle some olive oil. amount of Italian seasoning. Probably about a tablespoon. Just get in there with our hands and just give that a toss. Any of the big pieces we're just gonna break them with our fingers. And then I have parchment paper lined bacon pan. Evenly. And then we're going to put these in the oven on 200 so they can dry out so we can. We have the oven set for 200 degrees. Now we're going to go ahead and put on in our breadcrumbs and get those dry. The bread cubes were drying in the oven for one hour. They're still soft, but they are dry enough to where I like them. I don't want croutons. I just wanted drier bread cubes. So we're going to let these sit until they cool off. And then we're going to put these in Ziploc bags and stick it in the refrigerator till tomorrow. So I have the sweet potatoes in the instant pot right there for 40 minutes. If we're able to handle those sweet potatoes, we're going to make the casserole. But in the meantime, I have both the pies. This is the chocolate pie and the pumpkin pie wrapped up in saran wrap. And this is going to go in the refrigerator. This is the vegetables, the apples. The carrots, celery, and onions that we cooked in our no-cost, no-waste chicken stock that we're going to use for the stuffing. I am going to put it in this. Our sweet potatoes are done. We're going to let these cool off a little bit before we start handling these, but for future references, it's don't go no more than 25 minutes. These are probably cooked more than I like, but we're just going to make do with what we have. So it might be more of a creamy sweet potato casserole versus a chunky sweet potato casserole, but we'll make it work. So I have a casserole dish right here where we're going to put our sweet potatoes. In this bowl, I'm going to put the peelings, scraps in there, and 
they are done like crazy done I don't usually like my potatoes this far gone but the internet told me how long I need to cook them so I did I will leave a note for myself not to cook them this long I have never cooked these in the instant pot before so I'm just gonna sit here and peel each one of these they are still a little warm Taking the knife, running it over the top of the skin and pulling it off of the the meat or the flesh of the sweet potato without losing as little or none of the potato. And then I'm just taking a knife and I'm just going through, just chopping it up a little bit. So I'm going to spread this out in the casserole dish, break up any big chunks which pretty much mashing them. So I have cinnamon, I have a teaspoon, okay, I have maple syrup, um, my mom used the corn syrup you know which one I'm talking about the blue label dark corn syrup but since I've started to be more conscious of what we eat I have converted to either honey or maple syrup so in here I'm gonna add about maybe a half a cup maple syrup I have some butter we're just going to put a couple little dollops of butter on here. This is a quarter of a cup of butter. And then our homemade brown sugar. What we're going to be do about quarter of a cup and just sprinkle that on top and we're going to cover this with saran wrap and stick this in the refrigerator and now the dish done now we're going to go ahead and put our bread cubes in Ziploc bags. The last thing we're going to make is two compound butters. I have a half a cup of butter in each one of these bowls. <clears throat> one, I'm just going to put plain honey in, just about a tablespoon. And the other one I have some fermented garlic and honey. I'm going to put about three cloves of garlic as well as about a tablespoon of honey. So I'm going to take this garlic and I'm going to chop it up. This is raw garlic that was fermented in the honey. I'm just going to try to chop it up as small as possible. There's a lot of health benefits to fermented garlic and honey. I 
take a teaspoon of the honey daily during the winter. All right, so I'm using a garlic press. I have all the chopped garlic in there and I just wanna squeeze it all out. Let's see, you can't see what I'm doing. I want it as fine and small as possible. I'm just going to use the back of the fork and work that garlic and that honey in this butter. The more you work it, the softer it'll get. This is room temperature butter. It is a little cold today, so it's not extremely soft. going to stop right there. Now we're going to work on just a plain honey butter. And I have a fork. And we're just going to mash this together. This is raw unpasteurized honey and it also has a lot of health benefits to it. And the way I want to package it is I just have some saran wrap. As well as some parchment paper. butter for your holidays according to your family size. It is just going to be the husband and myself for this Thanksgiving. And I just form it into a stick as best as possible. And then rolling it up tuck it in the ends and then I'm going to wrap it in saran wrap. The same thing with the honey garlic butter. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, I love garlic. Then we're going to try to form it into a little stick. So this is everything we did today. We have our pumpkin pie and our chocolate cream pie. We got our spatchcock chicken. We have our vegetables and apples cooked in some chicken stock for the stuffing. We have two different compound butters right here. In this bowl right here we have our peeled and chopped potatoes for the mashed potatoes. I got sweet potato casserole here and we have the marshmallows that we'll put on here tomorrow after we heat those up and then I have two bags of cubed homemade bread for the stuffing this was video one of a two video series on Thanksgiving I know it's coming to you late and I do apologize I appreciate you watching this video and it'll give you something to put in your back pocket for a future holiday or family gathering. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.